many times did she put me to bed, only to be awakened and hold me all night instead? How many transfers from booster seat to stroller? How many times my form was lifted by her shoulders? Even if I add up every motion of care till I was two feet tall, I could never measure the whole love of a mother at all. Stopped escapes from gates or locks or latches. How many warnings ignored not to play with those matches? How many apologies to every babysitter? How hard I made it when she had to take me with her. Even if I add up every single worried prayer. Every bandaid for each fall. I could never measure the whole love of a mother at all. Children missing mothers on this planet. How many moments have I taken mine for granted? For every worried prayer and every motion of care, till I was grown and tall, I will never measure. The whole love of a mother. Did you like that? Yes. Isn't that nice? Max found that. Welcome to everyone, no matter what kind of mother you had. So today we'll talk about mothering figures. Hey, look who's here. Awesome. Carol, and we're here, and I'm here, and I never can read that. First one, Dan is here, yeah. and Margie, and Martha Jo, our friend Vern Bader, and Mary Lou. Welcome. Yay. You know, it was their fifth anniversary, and Al and Alice had just returned from the movies. And Alice was feeling romantic, and, will you love me when my hair has turned to silver? Al said, well, why not? Didn't I love you through all the other shades? It was pretty good. Oh, thank you. It's always fun to laugh together, isn't it? So, some announcements. There are several copies of a little magazine in the back that's a devotional from Unity, and we got them for free to see if anyone would like to subscribe. And then it's a buck a month, and we'll have them here. So it's a really good deal. So let me know if you like them so we can order a few. The Spirit Discovery Group will be right before choir at 4.30. And we'll read a scripture, see what sticks out to us, do centering prayer, and then share. So I like it. You know, Team Synergy, during that meeting, we found out 
that our younger people would actually consider it a gift if we had a dinner and they didn't have to do anything but just get the kids here <laughs> and, and come. And of course, they want to interact with all of you. So we're hoping that we're hoping that someone will volunteer to kind of take over the dinner. Now, here's the deal. This is the good part. The kids said, guess what? What if it's macaroni and cheese? What if it's pizza? What if it's spaghetti? So it's easy, just so you know. <laughs> OK. Margie has an announcement. Margie, thank you. Um, You're on. Hi. Hi, everybody. Uh, I want to I want everyone to know that we're going to have a presence at Pride Day on May 21st. The right. youth are going to be there um, selling uh, strawberry shortcake, I believe. I believe the parish helpers are going to be there raffling their quilt. And the church is going to have a creation justice booth. Um, this theme originated from Bible study, Tuesday noon Bible study, and um, we have books to free raffle, the books that we've been reading about creation justice, and we, Julie has, Julie Kessler has been doing the lion's share of this work. She's been making stickers and coloring books and all sorts of things for handouts so that children can learn not only about the animals that we still have and can appreciate, but all those that are, th those that are uh, endangered as well. Um, we are going to ask the church for time for two webinars, and we would like to invite the public to it. So we've got a lot going on, but we need help. We need help setting up, tearing down, and we, ha we also need help manning the booth. This is May 21st, and please, please contact me to let me know that, that you're interested in helping us. Thank you. That's it. So during faith formation, they study a book, and the one that they studied was amazing. It talks about animals you've never heard of and would tell all about them and have these pictures, and they got so into it and kind of cried through the book because they're endangered. So um, that's where that comes from, because I was there a few times. I also want to announce that the funeral for Dick Nelson will be here at 1030 this Saturday. Okay. And it's so good to see Jill and Doug and even more. And they'll be having the burial service for Peggy Richards. Do you remember the date we decided on? June 7th. Okay, good. Thank you. I think that's all I have to say is Joe, please do. Would you like a mic? So you, it's right there. Awesome. Do I want to come up here? No. <laughs> oh, <laughs> Jan is back from Nevada <laughs> for a month to sell her home. I haven't seen her for a long time. Yeah. <laughs> um, I'm sorry that I was out when we normally make the announcement for. Um, the food pantry, I decided to have COVID and so did the rest of my family. So you know what, we're good. We have antibodies, we're good. Um, but I wanted to let you know with what the, um, the offering this month is, things like tuna in a can and also they, they say meats in a can. Well, the only meat I could find was chicken. So I'm thinking, you know, canned chicken, canned tuna, and yes. And what? Ham salad. Oh, chopped ham. Obviously, I don't even eat that stuff. So, spam. spam oh, spam. I'm sorry. Spam. That's a, a blast from the past. Okay, so spam, a tuna, and chicken in a can. Any of those things. And I'm so, so we're going to start filling up these, these steps with that. Thank you so much. Jesus said, come. To all mothers and all children, he said, come. To all the motherless and the childless, he said, come. To all who long to be mothered, he said, come. 
Come unto me, O ye who labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and hum humble of heart, and you will find rest for your souls. Come all mothers, all sons, all daughters, all can come to Jesus. And everybody said, amen. Please stand and sing one, two, and four of number 460. I want to do a little thing here. You know me doing all kinds of things before. This is a difficult day for some people. In fact, they probably didn't show. But celebrating mothers can bring memories because guess who's with us usually the whole time? So guess who makes mistakes? <laughs> Etc. So there's this verse, honor your mother, and it comes with a promise. So your days may be long. Isn't that interesting? Honor your mother if she always got it right. Well, no. Honor and respect your mother if she loved you the most of all the others. No. Does it say honor, esteem, admire, revere, venerate, exalt, toast, and pay tribute to your mom because she deserves it? Maybe, maybe not, right? Well, that commandment is put there to liberate us, to free us. And there's this Old Testament scholar who's amazing, and he talks about obedience. That the, the deal, we hate that in our culture, right? But what it means is we are impressed with this imprint that when we do honor, revere, and respect, actually all people, but definitely our mothers who may have wronged us, we are rewarded with a new kind of freedom. We've got energy that breaks loose to use for other things instead of investing it in the negative. So what I'd like to do is talk a second about forgiveness. What? This is Mother's Day. What are you talking about forgiveness? Unforgiveness is from a unity that I saw this week. Is a heavy bag of rocks. 
unforgiveness. I carry it on my shoulders. When I drop the bag and begin to set the rocks aside one by one, I embark upon a healing journey. God is with and within me on this journey as my constant support and strength. When forgiveness feels difficult, I need only return my attention to spirits, constant loving and accepting presence within me. And you know a good way to do that is with a breath. Let's all take a breath. And now let's imagine the color green coming into our hearts, which is a representative of heart love. And now if you would, close your eyes and put your hand over your heart. To reestablish our conscious connection with our mother, which can bring warm and welcoming acceptance or a process of forgiveness. And I'm just going to read you a verse. Bear with one another. And if anyone has a complaint against another, forgive each other. Just, the Lord, just as the Lord has forgiven you, so you must forgive. What an opportunity to see the world through God's eyes. Feel free to open your eyes now. We're going to do something really different. This is burst on by reading uh, somebody's blog yesterday who was talking about how the church is dying and we need to do these kinds of things. And the one that I really got, because I said it to my mom when I was about 17, when she asked me to pray at the, at the table after coming back from college. Well, it must have been 18 then. No, I don't believe anymore. I'm not praying. And thus began 20 years of agnosticism and searching. Well, so, I just lost my train of thought with that. What I'd like to, oh, I told my mom at that moment, thank you, God. I need an experience of God to believe. I was like Thomas. Woo. Took 20 years, but God gave me that experience. Thank you. So what I'd like to do is give you an experience you, most of you may never have heard of. And that is that we have different energy centers in the body. And this one is called the heart chakra or energy center. And to have it open makes you a very happy person, okay? So to open it yourself, you put your hand over your heart and then your other hand, as far as you can, up by it, behind the heart. And then just breathe into it. And if you really want to do this for real, like especially at home, just pray, God, help me open my heart. Breathe into it. Maybe you'll bring a color in. And now I'm going to ask you to do something really radical. Would you stand and with the person beside you, and make sure everybody gets included if there are only three of you, right? I'd like you to put one hand in front of the other person's heart and the other one behind it and do it for them, okay? Please stand to do this radical thing in church. Don't, don't touch. Yeah, both at the same time. So you have to stand at their side. They have to turn sideways. One at a time. One at a time. I'm sorry, that's what's being weird here. One at a time. One person stands facing me, and the other one, you go to the side and do it. One person at a time. <laughs> How sweet. And now switch. Remind me of your name. Abby, yes. 
Oh, with your glasses. You have got to be a son. Yes. Yeah. What's your name? Dave. If we were in school, I'd say, okay, did it feel different? <laughs> and I'm hoping you'd answer yes. Come on up, Dave. And read us a real heart story. Let me just prelude this. Remember I talked about Peter last time and how he was this brash, impulsive, impetuous guy. And so he got a name change from Simon, which is one that was the rock, meaning Peter. Listen to what he does in this story. Just, I don't know if it was a year later or less. Before I read this story, I'd like to tell you that when Ginny asked me if, if I would read this, and I started reading the, the text, uh, it warmed my heart. And the reason it did is because one of the best friends I've ever had in this sanctuary um, is... Uh, is a woman who's no longer with us. Her name was Dorcas Knight. Who remembers Dorcas Knight? Oh. I, I sure do. And before I start this, uh, Dorcas lived in a house right down up from the pub, uh, an old, old home. And the, over the years, the paint had chipped off and uh, there, there was hardly, it was half on, half off. And, for like two or three years, three or four young guys and young high school kids and myself scraped Dorcas's house, scraped and scraped and scraped. And finally, uh, we, uh, we got it ready to paint and, uh, <clears throat> and we, we, we painted the house white from top to bottom. And uh, the last day we were, we had a whole bunch of work to do and all of a sudden, we publicized this a little bit because Dorcas Knight had lived alone as a widow for many years. And all of a sudden there was a low rumble coming up 153 from Route 16 and about 16 motorcycles uh, came up from the pub and pulled into her driveway. And uh, uh, husbands and wives got off their motorcycles and they had paintbrushes and stuff with them. And between the, us and Royal Doty and I and these kids and then all the motorcyclists, we finished painting Dorcas's house. And in the last few hours, she came out of that house and sat in a chair in her kitchen chair in the front lawn and just looked up and the tears ran down, down her face. She was so happy because it reminded her of the day uh, that her husband carried her over the threshold when they were married. So oh I'd like to dedicate this verse to Dorcas. Thank you, Dave. Now in Joppa, there was a disciple whose name was Tabitha, which in Greek, yes, it's Dorcas. She was devoted to good works and acts of charity. At that time, she became ill and died. When they had washed her, they laid her in a room upstairs. Since Lydda was near Joppa, the disciples who heard that Peter was there sent two men to him with the request, Please come up to us without delay. So Peter got up and went with them. And when he arrived, they took him to the room upstairs. All the windows beside him, with, excuse me, the widows behind him, weeping and showing uh, tunics and other clothing that Dorcas had made while she was with them. Peter put them all outside and then he knelt down and he prayed. He turned to the body and said, Dorcas, get up. Then she opened her eyes, and seeing Peter, she sat up. He gave her his hand and helped her up. Then calling the saints and widows, he showed her to be alive. This became known throughout Joppa, and many believed in the Lord because of Dorcas. Thank you. Jenny.
This is Happy Happy Bible. Yeah, Revelation. I got I've got it. I've got oh, good. Yep. <laughs> I did my work before church. Dang, girl. Okay, look at this. I've got it labeled and I'm all set. Uh, today I'll be, we'll be reading from Revelation chapter 7 verses 9 through 12. After this I looked and there was a great multitude that no one could count from every nation from all the tribes and peoples and languages standing before the throne and before the Lamb robed in white with palm branches in their hands, they cried out in a loud voice, saying, Salvation belongs to our God, who is seated on the throne, and to the Lamb. And all the angels stood around the throne, and around the elders, and the four living creatures, and they fell on their faces before the throne, and worshiped God, singing, Amen, blessing and glory and wisdom, and thanksgiving and honor, and power and might. Be to our God forever and ever. Amen. We skipped the youth moment, but I'm hoping that a grandmother and a mother and a little daughter will come up. Yeah. And maybe you can sit right here, and I'm going to ask you an important question when I get a mic. Okay. Microphone? Microphone? Thank you. Oh, Molly, come. I want to do an experiment. Well, if she doesn't. She can bring her horses. Yeah. Hey. Might like to see them. Do you have horses? They're beautiful. Oh, oh. show us. Did big day Open yesterday, day huh? Yeah. Did you play softball yesterday, Molly Rose? Yes. Really? Yes. Did you hit the ball? Yes. Yes. Did you run? Yes. Did you make it to base? Yes. Awesome. Did you ever catch a ball or throw a ball? Yes. She's <laughs> tired. Well, guess what? Maureen Bridget, what do you think a mother is about? I'll let you think about that. When you have an answer, you can have love. Yeah. Like I. That's right. Great mother-in-law. <laughs> Great mom. Cool. <laughs> I'm thinking of a five-letter word that begins with a T. Let them try first, but then I'm going to ask you, what does a mother allow for a child to do? T. T R. Oh! <gasps> Did I get it? Yes, say it. I said trust. Yes. What does it mean to trust? I don't know. If you're on a horse, what does it mean to trust? Oh, yeah. What, if you were riding a horse and you had to trust that horse, what does that mean? You don't want him to drop you, right? So you trust that he's not going to drop you. Or buck. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, just to see if Molly Rose or Maureen Bridget would like to do this, we could demonstrate trust. So what I would ask Molly to do, if she's brave enough and trusts her mom and grandma enough, is to close her eyes and trust them to lead you around without hitting anything or tripping over anything because they're going to help you. Oh, she does. Well, yeah. then we have another we have a, another daughter here. Yeah. So how about if Ma we're why don't we leave mommy daughter? around, and she has to keep her eyes closed. What do you think? I think we. Or you could do it. It's okay. How? Okay. About, we can just pretend. <laughs> I, it's really Let's hard. Let's see if you can get back to your place. Okay. Yes. Close your eyes while we walk back. <laughs> yeah, that'll be our trust. It's okay, Molly. It's okay, Molly Rose. Yeah. Wow, she's a little kid who's tired. Yeah. 
Okay, let's see if I... I had a lot of papers today. So, you may have seen our friend Vernon Bader. He told me a story yesterday. He said, Terry, you know that Lord's, Lord is my shepherd thing? I said, yeah, I, I want to use that tomorrow and read what you wrote. And he said, let me tell you how that came about. I was at a meeting. I was one of the delegates sent from my church. And you know what? Nobody listened to me. And I won't tell you what he said in the middle of a sentence because there's got a four-letter word in it. But only one person noticed of the whole group and started laughing. <laughs> so he knew. So he was really aggravated at this. And he said, I'm going to turn a negative into a positive. So he got out his Bible and he interpreted the Lord's, the 23rd Psalm. And here's how his goes. I hope you're there, Vern. Hey, you can put him up if you want. Okay. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. Our Father is my protector, I shall not be envious. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside still waters. He restores my soul. In rolling hills or walled streets, God gives me peace. In quiet relationships, God draws me to greater depths. God glorifies his existence by leading me to better living. Even though I walk through the darkest valley, I fear no evil. If I meet the angry and the unknown, the wrongness of others will not scare me. I fear no evil, for you are with me. You are there with love and understanding, and this will support me, God. Your rod and staff, they comfort me. You will give me support and strength that those who dislike me can see. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil. My cup overflows. You fill me with sweetness of life that it overflows to the lives of others. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life and I shall dwell in the house of the Lord my whole life long. Yes, love and sweetness should be scattered behind every step that I walked, and our father, mother, will hold me now and never let me go. Thanks, Vern. Oh, that's right, I forgot my cheat sheet, so. We'll see what I remember. And I'm going to go back a little ways so you see the whole story. Mary Magdalene, on the very first day of the week, after Jesus had been crucified, died and buried, made her way to the tomb with some other women to put spices on Jesus' body. And when they got there, much to their surprise, the stone was rolled away. And they peeked inside and saw an angel who said, why are you seeking the living among the dead? Go and tell your brothers. So they ran back to the locked house where the disciples were staying in fear of the Jews that they might find them as well and kill them. And she said, the stone is rolled away and Jesus is gone. And two of those disciples ran out of the house, Peter and the disciple whom Jesus loved which we think was John. 
They ran, and John passed Peter. And when he got there, he peeked inside. Peter then got there. He pushed him aside, I'm sure, and went in. And there it was. The linen that had wrapped Jesus' body was over here, and the part that had been on his face was over here, all wrapped and laid aside. They left and went back to where they were staying. But Mary stood at the grave and wept. She was weeping. She looked inside again. And this time, there were two men clad in radiant white, one at the foot of the grave and one at the head. Dear woman, why are you crying? They have taken my Lord, my teacher, and and they've taken him away. And she saw someone behind her. She didn't recognize that it was Jesus. She thought it was the gardener. And he said, dear woman, what are you seeking here? Why are you crying? And she said, oh, they've taken away my beloved teacher. And I don't know where they've lain them. If, if you have taken him away, please show me where he is so I can take him. And Jesus said, Mary. And all of a sudden, with the glint of recognition, she turned and knelt. And, oh, Rabuni, which in Aramaic is teacher. He said, do not cling to me, for I have not yet ascended. But go now instead and tell the disciples what you have seen and heard. Tell, that, that, uh, tell them that I am about to ascend to my father and your father to my God and your God. And so she did. May God bless these words to your heart. I changed the lectionary because I love this story. It's so precious and perfect for Mother's Day. And I want to read you a little bit of what Friedrich Buechner, who was a mainline minister and wrote a number of books, allegories and very interesting stories, because it's so relevant today. Scientists speak of intelligent life among the stars, of how at the speed of light there's no time of consciousness as more than just an epiphenomenon of the physical brain. Doctors speak seriously about life after death, and not just the mystics anymore, but the housewife, the stockbroker, the high school senior, speak about an inner world where reality becomes transparent to a reality realer still. The joke of it is often that the preacher who has a steward of this wildest mystery of them all is the one who hangs back. Prudent, cautious, hopelessly mature, well, some are, and wise to the last. When no less than St. Paul tells him to be a fool for Christ's sake, no less than Christ tells him to be a child for his own and the kingdom's sake. Let the preacher tell the truth and finally let her preach this overwhelming of tragedy by comedy, of darkness by light of the ordinary by the extraordinary, as the tale that is too good not to be true. Because to dismiss it as untrue is to dismiss dismiss along with it that catch of the breath 
that beat and lifting of the heart, near to or even accompanied by tears, which I believe is the deepest intuition of truth that we have. So here we are in the garden with the beloved, Mary of Magdala, one of the closest disciples. It's said that she was one of the women who in Galilee, which now we're in near Jerusalem, in Judea, that she was in service and, and would help the disciples and Jesus as he traveled along. Wow. Reminds me of the parish helpers. And some of you around here, both men and women. She was a heart person. She loved, and she loved Jesus. So, of course, she's weeping. We don't even have his body to bury appropriately, to prepare for burial. But when Jesus says her name, she recognizes him. We go here from death and sorrow to resurrection. Resurrection here is experienced as grace and delight. At that moment, she abandons her grief, turns to her teacher, her Lord, with expectancy. And in that turn, can't you just see the smile coming onto her face? Jesus calling her name as a dear friend, a beloved. And her grief and sorrow was turned to a most intimate and loving moment with Jesus for one of his sheep. I had an experience with my mom that was also very momentous like this. And Max will put a picture up, I think. I'm a firstborn. <laughs> so I was happy, head on her breast. My dad had just started seminary in Grand Rapids, Michigan, and they were having a contest on facial hair. <laughs> so I read on the back of the picture that my mom wrote this week. And I could tell how happy she was. And she says, those guys are wild. <laughs> it's like, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Anyway, I love her smile there. We're at the piano. Uh, we have a musical family. I wish I'd have kept up with my lessons. Well, dad became a stockbroker after he had been a minister. And they moved out to Denver, where people would actually share with you about their finances. Because in Grand Rapids, Tizi is not here, but the, the Dutch wouldn't say much. <laughs> Grand Rapids and Holland and Kalamazoo were, were Dutch towns. Anyway, dad had died some years before and mom descended into vascular dementia. So I was there to help care for her in Denver. And when I got my call to Douglas, Wyoming to be an interim pastor, which was three hours and 15 minutes away, we needed a place, a home to put her in. And we found Catherine's, which had up to 11 other people. That place I could visit and spend time with mom. I visited her nearly every week, made that drive. There were times with her where there was no response. I would touch her, I would talk to her, there was nothing. There were also times where there was a connection. She rarely said my name, but there was a type of recognition often, and definitely a connection. My favorite thing was to hop on the bed with her, and we put in a video. And there's a wonderful Dutch musician, Andrew Rue, that did concerts, and that was her favorite thing. So we watched him a lot. One time, <laughs> we were watching a movie, and it was a World War II thing, and something bad happened, and she turned to me and said, what happened to him? So she was actually in a, so deeply ensconced in the show. It was a neat moment. We would hold hands and touch, and that was a process because she taught me not to touch. But I didn't listen anymore. 
She had been put into hospice for the second time. I had left in 2017 for a knee replacement. And it was November, and I went to visit again for a week because I was preaching on one Sunday and another, doing pulpit supply. And I had just arrived and gave her a hug. Hi, Mom. And then I went in the next room to the bathroom. And what I heard was astonishing. My Terry. <laughs> she was afraid I'd left already. She said my name a month before she died. The next time I went to see her was a death watch for several days. I had a feeling of completion with my mom. It was the best seminary you could imagine. It really opened my heart. I wasn't like this before. Remember my brother, Tim? She was a toughie. Now she breaks into tears when she's talking with you. And that's what Beekner was talking about, is the tears of love and joy that come from spirit. Mary had one of these moments. I hope you've had one of these moments with whoever has been a mothering figure for you of trust and love and compassion. He calls out to her, and at first there's that intimacy and that power between them, and then he says, take that moment to the rest. Take it to all of us. We are intimate with God and our other beloveds. Mothering figures on whose breast we can rest our here weary heads, in whose lap we can share our sorrows, shames, hurts, be accepted and restored. You have somebody like that in your life, I hope. We are all to become mothers. <laughs> Gently loving, accepting and nurturing and compassionate, able to be trusted with ourselves as well as others, acknowledging the child in each other and the child in ourselves. Let's give thanks for being able to do this and to be such. We give thanks that we're given the opportunity to hold, to inspire, to touch others as mothers as mothers and as shepherds. And will you say with me, Amen. Thank you. And let's sing now the famous hymn. Please stand. Oh, what number?
as we see the pictures that you guys sent. I guess there were six of us who figured it out. Do, 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 do. Okay, now we have the fessing up time. You know that this one in the top left is my mom, Laverne, Edna, Michelson, Kruger. <laughs> Who's this one down here? Pardon? What? Nobody's fessing up? Nobody here sent it? Oh, I, we can't tell who you're, who pointing, you're pointing to. The bottom left, below my mom. That's, That's Carol, Carol Jeffrey's mom. mom. Well, Carol Jeffrey, tell us about your mom. How many kids did she have, etc.? She, had, she five. had five. Oh, so did we. And I'm, and the, I'm the oldest. Yeah. yeah. Wonderful, Wonderful woman. woman. Grew, up, grew in up in Boston. Beautiful. Beautiful. Competitive. Competitive. Oh. Strong. Great, Great role, role model. model. Awesome. Wow. Thank you. Appreciate your sharing. Okay, yeah, let's make it big again. Now who's beside my mom on the other side of her? Right there. Who's that? Anybody here? No? Anybody on Zoom? Willing to share? Hello, hello. Okay, and in the red here. Oh, Rachel! You have to give her the microphone here. Now we can see. She looks yes, just like her nice. mother. Beautiful. Yeah. Tell us about your mom or your family. My mom, Jean. Jean. <laughs> Which I adore that name. Yeah. Um, I'm the oldest out of four. Wow. And my mom and I have very many similar characteristics. Um, she was a wonderful cook. She loved flowers. She was an avid gardener. She was an interior designer. Oh. Really? <laughs> I'll come by it honestly. Thank you all. We'll call you Jean Jr. then, huh? <laughs> Great. Thank you. And who is the woman standing? Jan, do you know? It's my mom. Really? There's Jan Stanley's mom. Tell us about her, Jan. I thought more people were going to participate in this. Too bad. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, tell us. Name was Edna. Edna. Oh, I'll be yeah. darned. Um, she had two kids, myself and my brother. We were 17 months apart. Talk right into that mic. We were 17 months apart, and we spent most of our growing up years in the fields of Indiana. Yay! And then she moved to Florida, and the Lord took her way too young. She was 62 years old oh, yeah. when she passed. Uh, she was a seamstress, mm. gardener, yeah. and probably my greatest advocate. <laughs> oh, nice. Fantastic. Well, thank you. Does anyone else have a little story that they prepared? Because you read my all-church email and said, oh, yeah, I'm going to tell the story about mom, blah, 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 or a mothering figure. Don't be shy. Or be shy and courageous at the same time. There we go. Janet Twombly. And Norma. I can't help but think. Do you want to hold this or do you? Oh, sure. Friendship. Friendship is so important. And if it wasn't for Miriam Cooper, who is my mother, <laughs> and Dolores Weeks, who attended this church many years ago, I wouldn't be here because they were friends. They were really close friends. And it's through my mother that things went 
evolved, and that's how I'm here because of, um, yeah, Dolores Weeks, who used to attend this church, and I had married into the family by way of initially a friendship. Nice. Oh, awesome. You. And you're wearing a shirt that says, oh. the best aunt ever. <laughs> cool. You bet. Janet, do we, we know your mom, don't we? My mother is one of 14 children. 14. 14. Talk right into that mic, please. It's on. It's on, yeah. She's one of 14 children. Uh, she, was, she married my dad when she was 16 in Vermont. We lived in Vermont all our life. Huh. And she was a hoot, I'll tell you. <laughs> there wasn't anything she couldn't do. And I said to my dad one day, Dad, where are all the pots and pans? And he said, if you look under the sink, you'll find me because your mother doesn't like to do pots and pans. <laughs> and when Good I was trick. I'll learn that. When I was in high school, everybody would say to me, where's your sister? I say, I don't have a sister. Well, I saw you with her the other day. Well, that was my mother. Wow. She was very youthful looking. And she passed away at 85. Oh. And I'm telling you, we had a wonderful time as mother and daughter. Oh, awesome. Thank you. What do you do with your dirty dishes? <laughs> Put them in the dishwasher. <laughs> Not under the sink. Okay. <laughs> and Norma? Oh, you were wanting me to notice. Yeah. Great. Thank you. Anyone else? Hey, Ruth. Um. My mother was uh, 88 when she passed. Wow. We, uh, I was the youngest of three children. I have uh, two older brothers, but... Uh, Let's hear it for the youngest. My, uh, <laughs> <laughs> there we go. Yeah. my younger brother has also passed away. Uh -huh. um, she was widowed for about um, 30, 30 years before she passed, and um, she was on her own. She hadn't been for many years, but she was on her own. And uh, when I was, uh, my children were little, she uh, lived with us for a few years, and then she said, no, I'm going back to Boston. <laughs> and I said, okay, mom. <laughs> she loved children. She was uh, the best mother and grandmother. Nice. Uh, unfortunately, before she died, she had Alzheimer's. Mm -hmm. So um, she didn't get to really know, and she knew her grandchildren until the Alzheimer's, but nice. she didn't get to uh, really know her great-grandchildren. Mm -hmm. And um, she came to, uh, my daughter came up to visit when she was in the nursing home, and it was my first, second grandchild, but she, she didn't know by that time my daughter or her grandson but she thought he was a cute baby yay <laughs> and it sounds like it was a time of healing when she was with you that she could go back to Boston after a while. yeah 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 it was well thank but, you uh, I moved back to Massachusetts so oh I was with her until uh, she passed away ah. and she was a wonderful mother wonderful thank you anyone else anybody else do 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 Terry, I just wanted to share. Max, I don't. I didn't hear it, but the other woman on the on the picture there is oh. Hazel McBrien. Oh, thank you, Max. Hazel McBrien is the unidentified woman at the top. Very nice. Thank you. Did you figure that out, or did someone send it to you? That was sent to me by uh, Beth Fox. Oh, wonderful. Great. Well, it's time to pray. Do you have some joys or carings? And phrasing it in a positive way. Brian. Thanks. <laughs> Stand up. I'll be the gentleman. Okay. Uh, the men this morning are putting on the uh, coffee hour. 
Hmm. And the men's group is also the ones responsible for giving out the carnations and that too. All the wonderful moms. Thank you, Brian. Thank you to the men's group. It's, it's yeah. really wonderful to be spoiled for a change. Anne? Go get it, go get it. <laughs> I have a joy. Um, we've been praying for my husband's cousin, Lorna, when she went into hospice. Well, she's now out of hospice and in rehab. So thank you all. Yeah. Anybody else? Pat. Well, I'm very joyful my son joined me in church. Yeah, Billy's here. <laughs> It'd be nice if I could get my daughter to join us, but <laughs> can't win them all. Yeah. And what a great son you have. As you've seen on Facebook, Pat's son is sending her to visit with Mickey and Minnie in Florida for oh, her birthday. Awesome. I won't say the number of your birthday. You don't care. Well, it's going to be her 80th birthday, and she'll go down and spend it in Florida. <laughs> and which Disney is that? World. World. Woohoo! Anyone else? Joy or concern? Oh. Oh, thank you, Martha Jo. I um. I have a. Concern for Tim. Tim. He's, He's having surgery tomorrow morning. Um, he fell on Wednesday playing a game of Timmy Tag in gym and um, fractured his elbow. And tomorrow they're going to put two or three headless screws in to secure it um, that he'll uh, get to annoy TSA with for the rest of his life. Um, and for Ryan, who has COVID. Um, he's isolating out in the camper and I'm just a little concerned that if, you know, um, uh, I repeatedly come up negative and that's great and I feel great. Um, but if Tim or I get it before tomorrow, I have no idea what that would mean for his surgery. And it's important that the surgery happens before his bones start to heal. And of course he fell on Wednesday. So just fingers crossed and prayers that everybody gets well and better and that Tim's surgery goes well tomorrow and without any delays or hiccups. And um, yeah, just uh, thank you to my family because they have already made my Mother's Day and they are just the best people on the planet and I love them very much. Thank you and happy Mother's Day to everybody else. Thank you. And oh, there's buttercup. buttercup. <laughs> that was really good. <laughs> I think I saw another hand, Jan. I'd like to have uh, prayers for my son, Paul, uh, for this knee operation that he's gonna have, but they can't do it until June because they can't get an operating room. Yeesh. So just prayers for him and he's in a lot of pain with it. So hmm. hopefully he'll come along fine. Prayers for my uh, daughter-in-law, Darlene. She's got to have also knee surgery in, I think, a couple of weeks, and she's in a lot of pain. So pray, uh, prays for her, prays for her that the surgery will go okay when she does have it. And um, also Saturday, when my sister's uh, sister-in-law's uh, funeral will be taking place, mm -hmm. prayers to get through that day and. I know she's up with, in heaven with God, but and in peace. But gonna miss her. It's gonna be a tough day. Yeah, the family needs comfort. Yeah. Evie. Yes, Yay! Here. Do you want to speak into the? Oh, I'm loud, but I will. <laughs> okay. Oh, okay. Um, my joy is all of us we're all full of this joy today elizabeth fogg is here with us yeah. and she had good results with her surgery and we're happy to see her back and oh that's right saturday is her big birthday can i say the number 
Yeah, celebrate it. <laughs> nine, nine, zero. <laughs> She's 90. Um, I just have, I have a quick warm fuzzy that I'd like to share. And this happened yesterday when I was out shopping. Um, we've gotten scammed like two or three times lately. So we can't keep, we keep getting new debit cards, new credit cards. So I'm up at Walgreens buying birthday cards and Mother's Day cards. And, and I, I went to the checkout counter it's thirteen dollars and ninety six cents. So I take out my credit cards. I'm looking. Oh my gosh! I've got the one that they just took away from us to prevent the scam from happening. Oh. Then I tried my debit card, which is also new, and my security code didn't work. So I'm going. Oh, so now I'm sitting there going, and I have no money, no money in my purse. So I put put the cards down. I asked the guy. I said, "Could you please be kind enough to save these for me? I've got to go home and get some money." And this wonder, so I start walking out the store, and this wonderful lady comes up to me and she said, are you leaving because you don't have money? And I said, I, my credit cards, I, and yeah, that's not working. It's not that I don't have money, but I can't pay for this now. And she said, I'll be happy. Just put it in with my things when I check out. So she took my cards, checked out all of her things, put my cards in with her, her belongings of what she checked out. And I just thought, and I, to, I just was so grateful and I said, wouldn't it be wonderful if we all did that? If everybody just did one thing a week or, or what, but God bless her. And um, it just made my whole year. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> I'm easy to please. Cool. Yeah, 1396, yeah. Is there anybody else? Awesome. Great. Thank you. Oh, so please join me in prayer. Just taking a deep breath, feeling your feet on the floor, except for Molly Rose, and your bottom and your back against these strong pews. Feeling our mothering God holding us, holding us close, intimately, and saying our name. Thank you, God, that you're beyond masculine and feminine, that you can do it all. We pray for our world. We see light, your light. We help to channel it to the world. And whenever we worry, help us to breathe and change it to a positive. That's the way the world changes. We thank you for all the joys today of the men's group helping and Anne's cousin out of hospice for new friends paying for cards, and that we can pass things on. That Billy's here for Pat and giving such a wonderful gift. And that Elizabeth is here, that her surgery was healing. And that she'll have an awesome birthday. And thank you that Andrea, her daughter, is here with her today. We pray for Tim as he's facing surgery tomorrow. Give him peace and calm. We see the doctors being victorious in any situation, bringing healing to his elbow. Pray for Ryan. May he be healed. Pray that Paul, that his pain will reduce as he waits for the knee operation. For Ruth's daughter-in-law with her knee surgery. 
and for her sister-in-law's family with the funeral. We also think of Dick Nelson's family in their grief. We thank you for Peggy Richards and for Chrissy and Jill and Andrea and Doug being here today to celebrate her life. Oh, we each imagine our mother, our mothering figures, and feel our hearts, how they stir. We pray that all will be able to forgive and be free using that energy for love. We thank you for this group, this body. Just as Mary ran to tell the good news, may we share resurrection stories, which always come after death, sorrow, and grief. It's creased into the universe. New life. In Jesus' name, amen. And will you join me in the Lord's Prayer in any way you want to say it or know it? Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. And lead us through temptation, and deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Carrie Newcomer is one of those terrific musicians who's given us permission to use her things, and so... Please enjoy. I, I found a different one this morning I thought you'd like better that she wrote 10 years ago. And we'll take the offering during the time. <laughs> Stand and join me in the prayer of dedication. Dear God, bless these gifts so their use will magnify the experience of your love and grace in our homes and in the world beyond. Amen. The prophet Isaiah tells us, as a mother comforts her child, so God will comfort us. Raise your hands to bless those around you as well as God. Go now in the comfort and peace of the one 
who gave birth to all of us. Amen. Now, let's go across town where this next musical superstar is performing her show. Hello, everyone. Well, I hope you're having a great time at the Daytime Emmy Awards. I'm sorry I couldn't be there with you in person. We are doing our show a few blocks away. But I'm honored to still be able to participate in this wonderful tribute to my dear friend, Oprah. And Oprah, everyone wants to say hello to you. All right. And personally, I want to thank you for your continued support. I know that this next song is one of your favorites, so I would love to dedicate it to you. Thank you, Oprah. For all those times you stood by me, for all the truth that you made me see, for all the joy you brought to my life, for all the wrong that you made. Okay, I want you all to sing this last phrase for Oprah with me, okay? All right. Because you... 